This is The Natural Laboratory, a podcast exploring science for Bay Area National Parks. I'm Cassandra Brooks. Dead cat mushrooms, also known as Amanita phylloides, are found throughout the Point Reyes region and are the most poisonous mushrooms in the world. But they're fairly new arrivals here. They invaded the San Francisco Bay Area in the late 1930s, likely brought over on cork trees from Europe for the wine industry. By the late 1960s, death caps were found in Tamales Bay State Park and have since spread throughout the Point Reyes Peninsula. Benjamin Wolf, a graduate student at Harvard, is studying the mushrooms invasion here in Point Reyes. He's using genetics to study their abundance and distribution, trying to understand what controls and confines their invasion. I sat down with Ben in his mushroom lab at Harvard to find out more. We're pretty much the CSI of mushrooms. So we go out, <laughs> instead of working with criminals and murders and crime scenes, we're just trying to figure out where mushrooms have gone. And this, we use similar techniques, so we use a lot of DNA barcoding that they use in forensics okay. labs to figure out, is this actually Amanita phylloides, or is it a different species? And then we go to herbaria and look back in time at records that people have collected to track where it's spread over time. And then we often go into the soil and probe the soil with these DNA barcodes to figure out, does the soil sample have amine defloides? Has it been invaded? Ben does his fieldwork in Point Reyes because amanita are incredibly abundant and large here. But it's also a real hot spot for ectomycorrhizal fungi in general, he says. So what are ectomycorrhizal fungi? This tongue-tying term refers to fungi that form a symbiotic relationship with tree roots. Many of the mushrooms you see throughout the forest are ectomycorrhizal fungi, but you're only seeing part of the story. If you could peek below the soil, you would see white cobwebby mushroom roots called hyphae snaking out in all directions. On one end, they're grabbing nutrients from nooks and crannies that tree roots can't get to. On the other end, they're connected to the trees, sharing their nutrients and stealing sugars produced from the tree's photosynthesis. They use those sugars to make the mushroom you see throughout the forest, which are used for spreading spores and reproducing. Amanita phylloides is one of perhaps 10,000 species of ectomycorrhizal fungi. But it stands out, Ben says, because it's managed to move from one part of the world to another and suddenly take over and become very abundant. And when we went into Point Reyes and looked at it in more detail, when we actually went into the soil, extracted DNA to see what trees it was growing with, it was really clearly picking and choosing from the entire community available just these oak roots, <laughs> which is really surprising for one of these fungi to be that specific. And we're also just looking at general patterns of how it associates with different hosts. So it's really different on the East Coast. So on the West Coast, it loves the coast oak. But then when you come on the East Coast, it's only associating with pine. And then when you look at the native range where it grows in Europe, it only generally associates with oaks. So it seems like it's gone from its native habitat with oaks, moved to North America, and on the West Coast where it's invading, it seems to really associate mostly with oaks, and on the East Coast only with pine. So it's almost like it's made a host shift. That's what we're broadly interested in the lab, is fungal symbioses, what controls them ecologically, and then from an evolutionary perspective, how have they come to be, what genes and what processes have allowed these things to evolve the symbiotic lifestyle. So it's sort of like the human genome project for fungi. Right. You can ask these really broad questions about, you know, what genes give me a certain eye color, but in this case we're asking what genes are making this thing associate with an oak versus a pine. Maybe you could talk a little bit about when this mushroom is so well known, it's called a death cap. I mean, how is it that it's still the right. most amount of people get poisoned by it? Right. I think the main reason is that people who have immigrated to North America from other countries get confused because mm -hmm. there are things in their native range that look like the death cap mushroom but aren't poisonous. Right. And so there's a lot of confusion. And unfortunately, it's hard to educate people in so many different languages and, and warn them about it. Right. And in areas where it is so abundant, people encounter it very frequently. They pick it, and they think it looks like this thing that they ate back at home, which was really tasty. And in your understanding, is it the most poisonous mushroom? It is. Okay. It, you know, in terms of the amount of toxin and how toxic it is per amount that you eat, it is, it okay. is considered the most poisonous okay. one. Yeah, because once you get poisoned, once you've ingested about half a cap of the mushroom, it goes into your body, and the toxins are really concentrated in your liver. And essentially, your liver just starts to dissolve. It just sort of falls apart. The story is that you eat it, you get really sick at first, and you're like, wow, this does not feel good. And then the second day, you apparently start to feel a little bit better. And then the third day, you die. The other thing about these mushrooms in California, they're really robust. They're huge. Mm. And they're just so you, you're intrigued by them. Ben and his colleagues are indeed intrigued by the mushrooms. Not for eating, of course, but for understanding the ecology and evolution of symbiosis. They've even recently put together a review paper showing that ectomycorrhizal fungi invasions occur across the globe. They have yet to see if invasive mushroom species act similar to plant and animal invasions, but with more CSI-like investigation, they're sure to find out.
with the Pacific Coast Science and Learning Center. I'm Cassandra Brooks.